So in this video, I'm going to be going over six of the most unique backrooms levels in the entire lore catalog. Now, I know what you're saying. Aren't all backrooms levels weird and unique in their own way? Well, yeah, obviously. But the ones in this video are even more weird and more unique than those. These all stand out for a specific reason, whether it's part of the level that's weird, an entity that lives there, or a strange effect, it's gonna get weird today. Leave a like if you want more long videos from me, and without any more blabbering on, let's get into the video, shall we? Backrooms level 23 is a class 4 question mark difficulty and is unsafe, overgrown, and has a medium entity count. This has got to be one of the most unique levels on the Wikidot, and it has one of the most unique level classifications that I've seen. The entire level itself is basically a huge super organism that's the size of a dwarf planet. Pretty much, it's just one huge living planet that's made up of trees and caves. The trees can look like any trees from real life, but there's also huge ones that we'll get into in a second. But the level itself is described as a similar size as the dwarf planet in real life called Ceres. You can travel all through the center of this level by using the natural tunnels that are carved out. The tunnels are surrounded by wood and stone and resemble just a normal cave system. Or you can walk around the surface of the planet, which is covered in really thick and dense forests. Now these forests are so thick that there's barely any light that comes through them to the ground. And the trees that I talked about earlier that are on the surface are from all over the real world as well. And they normally wouldn't be trees that are grown together, like oaks and evergreens are right next to each other here. But there's also these massive trees here that are like two miles tall and grow up through the ground called the green giants. These things can grow from the core of the very planet itself. There's also some extinct trees here, but it doesn't name any that are there, so it just says they're extinct. So under the tree covered surface of the level, there are huge caverns and open rock cutouts and caves and pathways that I talked about earlier. Some of the caverns have specific names, and some of the rooms in the caves have specific names as well. Like the glow rooms, for example. In the glow rooms, there are several trees that grow, even without the sunlight. There can be so many trees that actually it seems like there's an underground forest, even though there's no light. Now, the areas like this are lit up by an entity called the Gardener's Saris, which are glowy, bioluminescent things that light up the trees and the stuff down here. They can be in a bunch of different colors, and they're pretty chill. If you've played Ark Survival Evolved, they kinda look like the map Aberrant. If you know, you know. The atmosphere down here in these caverns is damp and cool and earthy, and it's also the place where the most entities and vegetation spawns. So be careful. Pretty much think of a fantastical underground wooden city. The next part of the level is called the Ancient Ruins, and it's not just really one part, it's a collection of all the abandoned structures in the caves. All of these structures are extremely old and covered in roots and stones and vines and moss, and there's even some of them that look like they're from real life, but with slight alterations. Like the Great Pyramids of Giza are down there, but they're in a circle, or like the Roman Colosseum is down there as well, but it's shaped in like a square which is pretty cool. Inside of the ruins, there are some artifacts like poetry on tablets and cloth and some paintings from real life, but all the stuff here is really decayed and it's really fading away, so you can tell it's been there for a long time. Right outside of one of the ruins, there's a message written on a tablet in Latin. I'll get to what it says in a second, but that's the first of many scribblings written in this level. There's even graffiti scribbled on the inside of ruins that looks like someone hastily wrote it, like they were in a hurry or something. That plaque that I was just talking about says, we dedicated this great sphere of Giza to the great gardener in hopes of forgiveness for the great wrong we have committed. Already our purple eyes have turned green. We have started to return to the earth, forgotten and overgrown. Our only hope is that, alone and petrified, we will not disappear. So yeah, I gotta be honest, that's, that's creepy. The very core of this giant living planet thing is the part of the level that remains barely explored. It's the lushest area, the most plants grow here, the most entities are here. It's like a life center 
The very core of the center is a huge, never-ending reservoir of water that feeds the entire planet. And those two-mile-tall trees that I talked about earlier grow directly from this huge reservoir of water, and they carry the water up its trunk and release the vapor into the caves and above the ground. So that's how the rest of the level gets its nutrients. The trees kind of work like roots, if you think about it. This level is actually home to a really creepy entity called the Buried Centuries, which can only be awoken if the phrase, quote, it's only a matter of time, is said out loud. The sentries themselves are trapped inside of wooden roots and the bark of the cave walls, and if they're awoken, they jump out and they scream so loud and so constantly until you run away. The scream sounds like a chainsaw cutting wood, apparently, which is terrifying, to say the least. There's only been one base here, and it's called Meg Base Seedling, and they pretty much just explore the level and research it. Then they've got around 35 people that live with them. To enter this giant, fantastical living planet, you can just walk through a hollow tree on level 47 or 37. Or you can enter a hollow tree from the Crimson Forest to get here as well. And you can exit by jumping in that huge water reservoir at the core of the level, or you can noclip into some of the different ancient ruins in the caves in order to be sent out of the level. Also, I just realized how hoarse my voice sounds. Apologies, I've been recording all day. So that was the level 23. It's literally just a dwarf planet that's pretty much a living, breathing organism. There are caves and caverns full of glowing trees and normal trees, and there are old ancient ruins in them. On the surface, there's a dense forest, and all of this is fed from the heart full of water at the very center of the planet. Honestly, this might be my new favorite level. It, it, it just gives off good vibes, bro. So Backroom's level 931, or the Leafy Corridors, has a classification of Class 0. And it's safe and stable and devoid of entities, question mark. So it most likely is devoid of entities, but we don't really know. It's just up for debate. The beginning of the level shows itself as a long and winding concrete hallway that's huge and has really tall ceilings and big glass windows on the left side. These windows are huge rectangles that look over this beautiful sky scene, and it's always this sunset time of day when you look outside. The ground of the hallway is made out of grass and flowers, and it gives off this eerie but relaxing feeling, almost like you've been there before. The sun that shines through the big windows gives this entire level a bright kind of glow that has a similar healing effect and calming effect that almond water does. So just by walking through the hallways, you'll You'll feel more alive and more comfortable and you'll start healing more and you'll just feel awesome i mean how can you not this entire level gives off a feeling of comfort and peacefulness a feeling of liminal heaven if you will it almost feels like an art piece in a way because it's so beautiful and eye-catching or maybe i'm just crazy and i'm looking into it too much i think it's beautiful the windows here actually don't have glass on them, so theoretically, you could just walk right out into the clouds to the side, but whatever you do, do not do that. You need to avoid the clouds at all costs, and I'll explain why later in the video. Just know that you gotta trust me. And I've never lied to you about anything backrooms related so far, so just trust me. So those grassy corridors that I just explained, that's the start of the level. It's kind of the zone where you'll spawn in and you'll be at for a while, but after you walk through it for a long time, you'll actually end up going to the second part of the level, which is just called part two. I know that's a crazy name, but you know. So part two of the level is a more enclosed space with less windows and less sunlight. This is the only part of the level that's considered really dangerous because it gives wanderers feelings of paranoia and uneasiness and in some cases dread. It's unknown exactly why it happens, but it's probably got something to do with there being no light and the hallways being claustrophobic and not open and I don't know, maybe being stuck inside the back rooms forever. That might also cause you to have dread. Anyways, it doesn't matter what you're feeling in this portion of the level, because the odds are you're still safe, which is nice. Around the floor on this section are random jagged rocks that are below the flowers, so don't step on those as well. But other than that, 
this part looks the same as the first part, minus the windows. Now, based on that paranoia and the dread feelings you might have that I just talked about, there's been multiple reports of people going insane while being stuck in this part two area for too long. Specifically, that it somehow depletes and lowers your sanity way faster than the other section. Because if you remember, the other section has that sunlight that gives you a healing property and kind of keeps you sane and calm. Well, this section doesn't. In order to counteract this effect, you just need to drink a bunch of almond water before you come here, and that should work, hopefully. But even if you drink almond water and aren't the type to go crazy, these darker areas will make you paranoid, and they probably will make you feel like something is right outside of the light and about to attack you. Who knows if there's something there? I hope there's not, but there might be. Now, after this first and then second part, there's a very rare and unexplored third part of the level that can also be dangerous if you don't explore it properly. The third part looks like the first part, with the big open windows and the grassy floors and the clouds outside, but this time, instead of it just being clouds in the sky, there's just ever so faintly a city inside the clouds, just like a floating city floating in the air outside of the windows on top of the clouds. Now at this point in the level is when your mind will try very hard to get you to jump out of the tunnel and into the clouds below, but you have to not do that if you want to survive, and the reason that the cloud area is so dangerous is because because it is a direct link to the void level. And if you don't know what the void is, it's pretty much just an infinite expanse of black nothingness that you're trapped into for all eternity, which is not very fun. And jumping onto these clouds seems to be, like I said, a direct link to the void. So just don't do that. No matter what your mind says, don't. The last part of the level is the fourth part, of course, and it's also where the exit is. Eventually, these grass halls will slowly start to transform into an area that's similar to an old abandoned mall. And when this happens, you'll know that you've successfully escaped and made it out to tell the tale. Now, this mall area isn't listed as an exit or a different level, so it's unknown if it's an actual level or if it's part of this level, level 931, but you can no clip through a wall to be sent out of this level to another one, so I guess it is an exit. But this mall area just looks like your typical abandoned mall that no one's been to for a while. It's very liminal, it's very cold and damp. You get the feeling. But besides a very small portion of this level, most of it is a beautiful, serene, safe, and just glorious looking level. And it's a real paradise if you're looking for a semi-infinite sunny hallway to lay down in the grass forever on. Now, if you're not looking for that, well, there's like a billion other backrooms levels that you could choose from. But this one's definitely pretty cool. To enter it, you have to find a door on the hub level that's labeled level 931, or you can wander too far into level 1. That also seems to take people here. Now, that could be very useful to speedrun the back rooms because you could go from level 1 all the way to level 931, which is skipping 930 levels, so you might want to keep that in mind. To exit, you can walk far enough into that fourth part, which is the mall, and you can no clip out, or you can find a door on the right side of the hallway and go through through it to be sent to level 184. If you remember, the windows are on the left side of the hallway, so the right side is where the concrete is, you can find a door there. Or you could just bring a huge store of almond water and stay here forever. It's pretty much up to you. Backroom's level 1912 is actually surprisingly classified as a class 1 difficulty and is safe, secure, and boasts a low entity count. The level itself is made up of randomly segmented rooms that are exactly like the ones that were on the Titanic. I mean, what can I say? There are actually five sections that make up this level, and those sections are the first class, the second class, the third class, the maintenance boiler room type area, and then the boat deck itself. Now, the entire level takes place on the boat, the Titanic boat, which is way bigger than the original Titanic because this boat is around 25 miles long and around 330 floors tall. That's huge. And the water that this boat is apparently floating in is actually the same size as Earth, but there's no land masses, so it's just water. It's just a floating water ball with a huge boat on it. Like what? The only matter in the water are icebergs. I think I'd go insane if I was on an entire planet made of water with only one boat. I, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. 
The first class section of this level is made up of the rooms and gathering areas that were on the real Titanic, and is decorated with fancy wood grain and carpets, just like the real Titanic's first class was, and it's probably the safest section of the level, it's the highest up, and it's the nicest decorated, so I'd be staying here if I could choose. Now following the same theme, the second class is also laid out similarly similarly to the real second class areas on the Titanic, but it's lower down in the ship and it has more entities, but not many because it's still second class, let's be real. On this part, there are empty kitchens and dining rooms that are full of old rancid food and longer skinnier hallways than the first class area. Not very fun. Now the third class part of the level takes up 103 levels of the 330 on the ship, and this is probably the worst out of the classes. Obviously, it's the third, so you think it'd be the worst, but yeah, it's the worst. It's got the tiniest rooms, it's got the most cramped hallways, and overall, it's just the dingiest place in the level. Well, maybe not, because the next section of the level is the maintenance area, which is the area where the boiler rooms and the engines are and all the coal is and stuff, and in this section, it gets extremely hot and humid all the time, probably from the machinery, so it's not really safe to stay down there, but I don't know why you'd go down there, but whatever. Apparently, there's also some food storage and almond water storage in this area, but I'm not sure how long it would stay fresh since it's so hot, but you know what? Whatever. The last section of this level is the boat deck itself, and can you guess what it is? Yeah, it's a boat deck. But the weird thing is that it's literally falling apart. The wood on the floor is breaking and splintering, and the fences on the edge are rusty and breaking in half. So that's kind of weird that it's like the most dilapidated area. The entities here, like I said earlier, are typically located on the lower decks of the ship, so the third class and the maintenance boiler areas, and there's actually only a couple of types of entities, which is why the level is only a classified one difficulty. But those types of entities are smilers and frowners, and if you were like me and didn't know what a frowner was, they're similar to smilers, but they're more passive, unless they feel threatened or cornered, and then they'll get aggressive. So my advice is to just avoid the lower decks. Simple. There are two groups or outposts that permanently live on this elongated Titanic, and those are the Backrooms Voyagers and the Resi Builders. The Backrooms Voyagers have around 30 people in their group, and they're nice and open to trade with anyone. They live in the second class area, and they're currently trying to make a detailed map of the ship's layout so people can find their way around easier. Now the Resi Builders, or the RBs for short, are very secretive, but they're kind of like the security of the level, and they keep it safe, and they also do research on the water in the level to see if there's any dangerous stuff there, but so far, nothing. To enter this level, you can open a door from Backrooms Level 5 that leads to the second class area on the boat, or you can do one of the other seven entrances. There's plenty of them to choose from. And to exit, you can just go back through that same door to lead back to level five, or you can find a door labeled the hub in the first class area, and it'll take you to, well, the hub. So yeah, to summarize this level, it's a huge boat that's 25 miles long, 350 stories deep, and is laid out very similarly, I can't say it, similarly, to the original Titanic, but obviously it's much larger. The different sections of the level have different decorations and different levels of decay, and there's rotted old food in the kitchens, and for some reason the deck area is the most falling apart dilapidated area, which I'm pretty sure would violate some OSHA codes, but whatever. The only entities here are Smilers and Frowners, which live in the lower levels of the ship, and the water that the boat floats in takes up the area the size of the Earth. You got it? Cool. Level 4000, aka the final frontier, is extremely unsecure and unsafe for the most part. Except in one part, which I'll talk about later. And the level is split up into two distinct sections, 
which I'll be explaining in depth, of course. But the two sections are called Thalassophobia and the Near Shore Area. The Thalassophobia area is unsafe and unsecure and has undocumented entities around as well as a extremely dangerous documented one. But this part of the level induces a deep sense of Thalassophobia to you the second you're in it. Even if you don't have that to begin with, it still gives it to you which is just terrifying, man. Also, if you don't know what it is, thalassophobia is the fear of underneath of water, the things underneath of it. This area has another weird effect on you where it drains your sanity constantly and you can't even help it. It just happens. This section also has extremely deep, dark water and the sky is always gray with no sun and the water is always rough and choppy. The only confirmed entity here is called the Death Whale which pretty much sounds exactly like the name suggests and is exactly like the name suggests, but I'll explain it in detail in the entity section of the video, so be patient. But yeah, that's it for the thalassophobia section of the level. It's dangerous, it's deep, it's a dark ocean. What else is there to say? The next section is called the Near Shore Area, and this area is actually pretty safe and moderately secure, which is way better than the death whale infested water. Since its name is literally near shore, I'm sure you can guess that this section is near a shoreline, quote unquote, but don't get your hopes up because there is no actual shoreline. It's just an infinite section of an area that looks like it's gonna be a shoreline, but you can never get close to it. Kinda sucks. Apparently two Meg members traveled 26 miles towards the shore that they thought was a shore and they didn't get any closer. This area has these black rock island formation things that stick out of the water and there's lots of other sea life here as well, like birds and lizards and that kind of stuff, as well as seagulls and mackerels and other fish and you know just the typical ocean stuff. And a really creepy entity also lives here called La Kamiloa which I'm gonna talk about in depth in the entity section, so you'll see it there. Every four hours in this area, a random mist will start to roll over the water, and off in the distance, you'll see a lighthouse light and the tower very faintly, but it's impossible to get to this lighthouse because it seems to change directions, and after about five hours of this mist in this lighthouse, it'll all disappear and it'll all be gone. And that was the last part of the le- Wait, there's a secret part, what? The secret part of level 4000 is called the Silver Waters and is safe, secure, with no entities. This section of the level has only been seen by two people ever and the entrance to it is unconfirmed and obviously unsafe. The water in this section of the level is kind of metallic, it has this weird thick texture to it, and it's also been tested and is actually made of a very similar compound to liquid silver. So like, melted silver, but an ocean. Interesting, very interesting. So for the long-awaited entity section, there are two main ones that I want to talk about, and those are the Death Whales and then the La Kamiloa. We'll get into the Death Whales first. These things look like normal humpback whales, which if you didn't know, are already one of the largest things on planet Earth, so that's terrifying. But instead of the peaceful giants from real life, Death Whales are anything but that. They are dangerous. They can detect you from miles away when you're in the water and they can swim straight up towards you and like a reverse torpedo, they will open their mouth and shoot right up at you and try to swallow you. The only chance of survival you have is to swim away just in time to dodge them. They also sometimes just come out of the water and just sit there with their mouth open for a little bit, almost like they're drinking oxygen, I don't know. It's different from real life whales because obviously real life whales have air through a blowhole, so maybe these things don't have a blowhole and they just breathe through their mouth. So far, there's been a total of 56 victims of these death whales, and the number will probably keep going up as more and more people go to this level. The next entity is the La Kamiloa entity, which is just terrifying to look at. I mean, just look. This creature is very mysterious and is rarely seen, but it's really unknown how it's supposed to act because 
sometimes is aggressive, but most of the time it's not. It looks like a large humanoid that's made out of stone, and it's supposed to be around 100 feet tall, but that's just how tall it is when it stands out of the water. Like, imagine how tall it actually is with its feet touching the bottom of the ocean. It's gotta be like 20 miles tall. The creature has only actually unalived two humans total by accidentally dragging them down underwater, but apparently it's kind of friendly to humans and doesn't actually seek out to attack them like someone else we know. But yeah, a four mile tall stone humanoid creature is still terrifying. There are actually two colonies on this level. Those are the Ocean Explorers and the Noki Noki. The Ocean Explorers, well, they're Ocean Explorers, and they're the only official group stationed here. They live on a huge inflatable raft on the water, and they guide wanderers to the exit of the level. Kinda wholesome. And they also like to swim, which is also wholesome. Now the Noki Noki tribe is a tribe of 50 people who live on one of those rock outcropping island things and they seem to be like a hunter gatherer society that just hunts animals in the near shore area. They're moderately hostile to outsiders but can be bargained with if you don't get really aggressive. To enter this level, the only reliable way is to noclip through a wet spot in the carpet in level 0. The rest of them are unreliable and are kind of finicky. Now to exit this level, you can find a specific circle of rock formations and then just wait on top of them to be teleported to the hub, or in extremely rare occasions, you can see the shore that I was talking about earlier, but the shore has a city on it when you see it, and then you can swim towards it, and then you'll be in level 1976. But that's extremely rare. The other two exits almost never happen or never work, so don't even try. The level unnamed. Level unnamed is classified as a class undetermined, which is what most of these levels are going to be classified as, so get used to it. And it was discovered sometime back in June 2020. The design and layout of this level is kind of like a big circle that revolves around like a spiral until you get to the middle of it. It doesn't help that the halls and the floors all look the same, and the halls are all circle shaped and bend constantly in a spiral pattern. So it makes it pretty disorienting for sure, and people who have been here say that the level makes them actually physically sick, and even depressed sometimes. The texture on every object has been described as the texture of oil paint. Specifically, it looks like an oil painting. The outside area of the spiral, which is where you spawn in, is less oily, and the inner part of the spiral hallways are more oily. It's also worth noting that making any skin contact with any part of the level will start to make you transform into a hollow one. Now, the hollow ones are a group of 20 to 30 humanoid type things that are made entirely out of oil paint, and they walk the halls. They're typically pretty chill and docile and they won't attack you, which is nice. However, if you're too close to the quote, blank, 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 blank altar, then they get really aggressive and they'll try to tackle you. Some of the hollow ones have the Meg logo on them, and apparently all of them were humans trying to get to the blank, 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 why so many blanks? All I know is that you shouldn't touch anything unless you want to be turned into an oil painting man. To enter this level, you can noclip through art in a trash can on level 57. The art is signed by quote, the artist, and you just have to noclip through the painting to get here. To exit the level, you can just noclip back through the art that you were holding, so make sure you're holding onto it still, and you can just noclip right back through it to get back to where you were. But I do want to note that you cannot noclip through the walls here, or you'll instantly be turned into a puddle of oil and then form into a hollow one. So only noclip through the painting. Nice. Next up is an enigmatic level, obviously, called Induced Fear. And just like the other level, it's classified as a class undetermined and is really mysterious. This level supposedly exists in a different reality or in a different pocket dimension type area than the normal backrooms because you can't get to it by normal backrooms transportation means. The level looks like an abandoned town that's constantly having this really dark fog rolling through it. The houses and the buildings are all accessible, but the doors don't work like normal, so you have to find a way to break in. And each building looks different on the outside and the inside. 
and the inside of the houses all have tons and tons of furniture. Each of the pieces of the furniture looks wacky or weird or broken in some way, and most of it's just trashed. And there's literally so much furniture that it's hard to walk around and explore the insides of the buildings. There are in some rare cases supplies inside the houses, but it's not likely you'll find any, and if you do, there won't be much of it, so it's kind of useless. But if you are inside a house, it's recommended to not stay there for a long period of time because multiple people have said that you get extreme paranoia and hear footsteps walking into the house from the outside if you stand in one spot for too long. This level's full size is actually unknown since lots of people who have been here get memory loss for some reason and they can't remember how big it was, but it is thought to be huge. One unique thing about this level is that each object has a weird ability to just grab and silence sound waves. So pretty much every object will absorb any sound that happens the second it happens. So there's literally no noise or echoes. And if you do hear footsteps or something like that, then you're just making it up in your head, but it still makes you go crazy and more paranoid. Wanderers who have heard these things, even though it's silent, have reported that they get extreme fear and anxiety about everything in the level. It's like they know it's completely silent, but they still hear things, which makes it even more creepy. And this might be the reason for that memory loss. So due to not enough actual evidence, this level still isn't proven to actually exist. And some say it's just a state of mind and not a real tangible place, but instead a place where your mind goes to get freaked out because you're in the back rooms. There are no bases here, and there's also no confirmed entrance, but it's theorized that in order to enter, you have to have some kind of mental instability from the past. It's kind of like that horse thing from Harry Potter that only people who have witnessed somebody unaliving can see the horse, kinda. And in order to exit this level, you have to completely let yourself go insane due to how quiet it is. I kid you not, that's what it says, and that's the only way out. I told you these levels were weird. So Backrooms level 283 is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe, unsecure, and has a lowish entity count. In short, the entire level is a humongous complex of playground mazes that are all lined up in different zones. I'll be getting into each different zone throughout this video as always, but first, let's just talk about the level as a whole. The entire level is made up of interior playground complexes, like those ones from McDonald's and arcades from the early 2000s. And all of these playgrounds are morphed and fused together to make one giant structure. Literally just an infinite playground tunnel complex thing. The main two parts of the level are these indoor playgrounds and then these infinitely expanding ball pits, but there are other kinds as well. We'll get into those later. There are also a couple lesser known areas like lounges and rooms and that kind of thing, but who cares about that stuff when you got infinite playgrounds to explore? So let's dive right into the main parts of the level, which are the tubes, the pits, the lounges, the labyrinths, and the fortresses. There are several tubes located inside of the level, and there are several entrances to the tubes also. You enter by climbing through a round, circular, slide-looking thing, and once you get inside of them, you'll be in this huge expanse of playsets. The only light in these tubes are from the windows inside of them, and the windows themselves are actually whited out, and you can't see through them, but they give off this white glow inside of the slides and the other areas of the tubes. Because they're whited out, no one has any idea what's on the outside of this massive complex or if there even is an outside, who knows. You can get out of the tubes by going down slides, which are located in the side of them, but be careful when you pick a slide, because you don't know where it's going to lead you to. The slides themselves can look like a variety of different ones. Some of them are just normal slides that go straight down to the floor, but like I said, they can also lead to very different parts of the level. Some could take you to the lounges, some could take you to the labyrinths, and some could throw you directly into a ball pit, which you probably don't want to go there because we have no clue what lurks inside of them. Some sections of the tubes are actually dark, and in these dark sections is probably where you're going to run into an entity if you do. You might run into a face lean or a wretch or something like that crawling through it. Just be careful where you're going.
The next section is the pits, which are just infinite expanses of ball pits that go down forever, and we have no idea literally anything about them. They're just huge ball pits. Inside of the section, the visibility is very low, and there's hardly any light, except the light you bring yourself. The very air itself seems to be foggy and misty, and the whole aura is just strange. It's been found that the ball pits actually have a similar effect to quicksand, where if you get stuck in one and then start flailing around and moving around, you'll sink further into them until it eventually collapses on top of you and you'll never be seen again. So far, clumps are the only entities that have been actually confirmed to be in the ball pit areas, but there's rumors of other entities that are lurking below the surface and moving around slowly inside of the ball pits that have never been documented. So it's advised that if you take a slide that leads to the ball pits, to climb back up before you fall off of it, because once you go in one, there's no escaping. The lounges are the next area, and these are actually the safest spots and the most hospitable spots of the level. They look like typical arcade lounges with tables and chairs and booths and plates and that kind of thing. This area still feels pretty strange and liminal, but in a good way. There are adult facelings that live here that run these food stand type deals, kind of like an old food court in a way. And the entire place is probably the best place to stay in the level. The labyrinths are next, and these are mazes of weird, colorful playground stuff. Things like teeter-totters, swings, slides, monkey bars, and literally everything like that are found here inside of the labyrinths. Just think of a massive complex of indoor playsets, and that's what you got here. Specifically, playgrounds. The area itself presents itself in a maze, and it just keeps on going and going, and it almost seems infinite. The walls are made out of some type of colorful plastic, and they have goofy paintings and shapes all over them, and everything is just like comically proportioned. Like Everything is huge, and the entire place has just really weird architecture. It doesn't make much sense. These labyrinths are where the level exclusive entity that lives here, known as Carnies, are found. But more on them in the entity section. They're just creepy clowns, pretty much. Anyways, the labyrinths seem to be like a fever dream of like this fun house. It's all very creepy and psychedelic, and you could get lost in here. The last location in this level that's been found are the fortresses, which are these weirdly tall looking stacked houses that just look comically made. They look like something out of a Dr. Seuss book. They're lit up with weird colorful light bulbs, and they can be up to 50 feet tall, and they just add this weirdness to the level. Carnies can also be located in this area as well. Now for the entities, entities like hounds and skin stealers and smilers and wretches and clumps can be seen in the dark portions of the level, like in the ball pits or in the tubes or in the labyrinths, and those are the most common ones. But entities like facelings, specifically child facelings, are a big danger inside of the tubes because they're very aggressive and mischievous. So just in general, be careful where you go in this level unless you want to get cornered by an entity. There's also that level exclusive entity that I talked about earlier called Carnies. These entities take the form of huge anthropomorphic clowns, obviously. They actually take on multiple appearances and behaviors. Some of them are nice and kind, and some of them are crazy and want to eat you. So just avoid them at all costs, especially since, you know, clowns are terrifying. But they do live in the labyrinths and in the fortresses of the level. So if you find yourself there, just don't run into them. There are also two bases here. One of them is a meg base called Epsilon, and one is a BNTG camp known known as White Castle. Both of them are open to trade and they kind of help people if they need it. These are hard to find though, so just be careful when you're wandering through if you want to look for them. To enter the level, you can find a comically proportioned door on level 2, open it up, and you'll be sent here. Or you can find a slide on level 9, go down it, and you'll wake up here as well. The exit, you can find a painting of a sad clown, and then take it off the wall to reveal the entrance to level 57. Or you can jump into a ball pit and hope it takes you somewhere. I don't know though, I feel like I'd stay here for a while just for the nostalgia of it all. What about you? Let me know in the comments. Wow, thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. This is over like 40 minutes long and you're watching to the end. I, I appreciate you, dude. Thanks. If you did stay till the end, let me know in the comments which level in this video is your favorite. Also, check below for any links you might want. I have a second and a third channel. Third channel is low-key popping off right now. If you don't know what it is, it's called Spoogly. I do like internet horror, weird ARG analog stuff over there. It's really cool. It's almost got 50k subs. Go help a brother out if you want to sub. If you don't, that's okay too. If you at least made it to the end of the video, would you mind dropping a like for the old Brewster? That way I can know if you did enjoy these, this kind of video, this style. Um, I'd, I'd love and appreciate you all. Thank you so much. And without further ado, I'm going to end the video here.